All statistics, information, and visuals shown in today's presentation is courtesy of ShipRaiders.com. Hi, I'm Doug Marsco with SUTV News. Football has been one of America's most popular sports since its conception, and at Shippensburg it is no different. Shippensburg first joined the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference in 1951. The team then began a two-year dominance of the division, only losing one game in three seasons, including back-to-back -back undefeated seasons in 1951 and 1952. This year, Shippensburg went a tremendous 9-2, their best record since 2017 when the team went 10-2. This increased optimism not just from players, but coaches as well, as many are excited about the direction of this great football program. Each year, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference awards the Dixon Trophy to the top athletic program out of 18 Pennsylvania universities. The PSAC has given Shippensburg the honors eight times the most of any school eligible. Shippensburg is also the first university to receive the award three years in a row, starting in 2003 and ending in 2005. While many are quick to point to the success of other Shippensburg athletics, such as the dominance of their field hockey team, Shippensburg football team also deserves its credit, especially these past few years where their play has spoken for them. Tonight, we will recap the Raiders' wonderful season, as well as hear from players and coaches alike on what makes Shippensburg football stand out. Shippensburg opened the year at home, facing West Virginia State, their first meeting in school history. West Virginia State was an impressive 7-4 in their last full season in 2019, but that did not matter for Shippensburg. Led by five defensive sacks, including three forced fumbles, the Shippensburg defense came into play, only allowing 160 yards of total offense to West Virginia State. Shippensburg trailed by as many as 10 in the first half, and their only source of offense was freshman kicker Jackson Montross, who gave Shippensburg four field goals in his first ever career game. This includes a school record 50 yard field goal Montross kicked with a minute 24 left in the game. Shippensburg's defense was able to scoop and score on a fumble recovery from Cameron Tedder to make the score 22 10 late in the fourth quarter, and Shippensburg would go on to win 25 17, making themselves 1 0 on the season with plenty of momentum going into their second game at Edinburgh. Shippensburg then won their next two games on the road as well, defeating Edinburgh 30-9, as well as Clarion by a whopping 62-33, where Kyle Evans would cement himself the fifth all-time on the Raiders' single-game receiving yards list, with 199 receiving yards. The team finally returned home, just in time to face off against state rival Bloomsburg. The Raiders in their career are 48-37 against Bloomsburg, and came in hoping to remain undefeated for the season. While there was no scoring through quarter number one, the Raiders must have woken up in the second, as they would score 24 points unanswered entering halftime. It began with Messina finding Ian Sheehan for the first touchdown of the game. The defense also wanted to get on the scoring once again, as Keon Smith intercepted this pass and took it 31 yards for the touchdown, giving Shippensburg a 17-0 lead early. Not much would change as the Raiders scored at least 13 points in both the third and fourth quarters. This includes a 78-yard touchdown again to Sheehan, making it the longest touchdown pass of Bryce Messina's career. Shippensburg won by a score of 51-7, and through four weeks had the highest scoring offense in the PSAC. The Raiders were now 4-0 to start the season, had plenty of momentum heading into game number five. When players look back on their time at Shippensburg, they tend to remember the teammates and coaches that helped them along the way. The brotherhood of Red Raider football is strong, and teammates are encouraged to talk to each other about problems they're going through on and off the field. Someone who embodies the qualities of these leaders is graduating senior Jacob Rutowski, a member of the offensive line this year for Shippensburg. Jacob sat down with me in his home to talk about the impact of the program had on him, as well as his plans for the future. It was to come to Shippensburg, play football it was easy. I knew it was going to get the best out of me academically and athletically. Uh, the difference between high school and college football, um, everybody's bigger, grown men, faster. Uh, to me, I think the practices were faster. Everything was just upgraded another level. Uh, a memory that I have from playing football here at Ship was after practice, throwing the guys in laundry bins and spinning them in circles, getting them super dizzy. It was fun. Uh, plans after school, going to the Pennsylvania State Police Academy and finish that out and graduate at that and become a state trooper. Shippensburg would lose their first game of the season, playing at number 22 ranked Shepherd. This would help fuel the fire as they returned home to play Westchester. The Red Raiders had not beaten Westchester since 2015 and were looking to change the narrative in this one. Shippensburg jumped on the lead quickly. 
as it was once again the ship defense, putting points on the board early as a botched snap allowed the Raiders' offense to start their next drive around the 15-yard line, which would end in a touchdown pass to fullback Jake DeLucia. Another score by Messina, this time on the ground, made it 17-3 Shippensburg, and it looked like it would be their game to lose. A field goal by Westchester, as well as this 39-yard run by running back Bill Williams, made it 23-6 late in the third quarter. Westchester, however, would come storming back as the score would be 23-18 Chivensburg at the end of the 13-minute mark of the fourth quarter, capped by this option play on fourth and goal. Chivensburg would respond immediately on their next drive, as on third and six, and receiving a three and out on their own 29-yard line, Bryce Messina would find Evan Morrill wide open in the middle of the field for a 71-yard touchdown. Another field goal would put the game out of reach for Westchester and give us our final score of 34-18 making Chippensburg 5-1 on the season. After another road loss to another ranked opponent in Kutztown, Chippensburg came into their homecoming game against Millersville. Chippensburg had beaten Millersville in 16 consecutive games coming into this one, and spoiler alert, it would become 17. Messina began the scoring with this scramble to the outside for a touchdown, followed by a Khalid Dorsey touchdown after Millersville went 3-0. and out. Millerville would go three and out on all of their drives until they picked up a first down in the fourth quarter. Messina would hook up with possibly his favorite target, Kyle Evans, for this 44-yard touchdown grab to make it 21-0. Messina would then score again with his legs to give Shippensburg a 28-0 lead heading into halftime. Coming out of halftime, Shippensburg continued its dominance as they would score yet again, this time on a pass to Ian Sheehan. A Jackson Montross field goal would give the Raiders a 38 zip lead, and they would finally take their foot off the gas for a bit. Millersville would then score their first touchdown against Shippensburg in two years on this pass caught by Akeem Melvin. 38 7 would be the final score of this one, as the Raiders were now an impressive 6 2. This game included a Shippensburg defensive record negative 61 rushing yards allowed. Coupled with eight sacks, the Raiders in their win column would only get better moving forward. While we've heard from one member of that Raiders offense, I was also able to meet with defensive back Fabian Roberts. Fabian came to my home to talk to me about why he chose Shippensburg, as well as the impact his coaches and teammates have had on him. What made me choose Shippensburg? Shippensburg was the first place that picked me up and I thought that it was home, so I didn't really want to talk to too many other schools. I like the people, I like the vibe. It was perfect for my accounting, my accounting major, so I just say, yeah, I'll come to one of the top business schools. Without the D-line causing havoc with the front, with the O-line and messing up the QB's timing with the receivers, to the linebackers being in the being in the right zones, to me making a play, everybody need I need everybody to play their part. After a narrow 24 to 23 victory in East Stroudsburg, the now seven and two Raiders were looking to get back to their usual way of winning by blowing out their opponents. They would get their chance in this one against Lock Haven. Just like in their game against Millersville, Shippensburg came out determined to own the game from the beginning. Messina's first touchdown pass came on this 18-yarder to tight end David Ballant the third. A Jackson Montrose field goal made our score 10-0 and would help Montrose become the PSEC leader in both scoring and field goals. A short run by Kyle Evans got the Raiders up 17-0 and the onslaught would only continue. Another touchdown, this time to Evan Morrill followed by the first collegiate rushing touchdown of Jake DeLucia's career, had Shippensburg once again up 31-0 over its home opponent. Only then was Lockhaven finally able to score on a blocked punt of all things, as Chris Hicks would take this one into the end zone. The first half had only 14 seconds left, when Bryce Messina found Kyle Evans through the air, this time for a 40-yard score. This touchdown made Evans the first Red Raiders since 2016 to score a rushing and receiving touchdown in the same game. Two more rushing touchdowns, first by Messina at the one-yard line with a little over two minutes left in the third quarter. Then it was Jake DeLucia again for 12 yards to make it another 50-point game for Chippensburg and a score of 52-7. to Lockhaven would score again with just under three minutes left in the game, but there was no chance at a comeback in this one here, as the Raiders would win by a score of 52-14. to Shippensburg's final game of the season would come against Mercyhurst, and it would be arguably the most competitive game of the season. The day began by honoring the 21 graduating seniors of Shippensburg football, who were hoping more than anybody to win this game and give themselves a shot at one more game in the postseason. Jackson Montrose kicked his 15th field goal on the opening drive, 
tying him for the second all-time on the Raiders' single-season field goal leaders, a tremendous season he's had. The Raiders would score their first touchdown shortly after, as this run from Jake DeLucia made it 10-0 Shippensburg. Mercyhurst would get two straight field goals to make it 10-6, and they weren't done. With 46 seconds left in the half, Cameron Barmore caught this 8-yard pass to give Mercyhurst a 13-10 lead. A scoreless second half was finally broken when, yet again, Jake DeLucia ran it in from 9 yards out to give Shippensburg the lead lead, a lead they would hold on to, but not before a last-second Hail Mary by Mercyhurst made it interesting. The Raiders won by a score of 17-13, making them 6-0 at home, their first time winning every home game since 2012 and capping off an incredible year of Red Raider football. Without a great coaching staff, every team will fail no matter how much talent they have. Shippensburg has been fortunate to say the least that they've had a strong foundation around their players for decades. Being a college football coach requires a tremendous amount of time and dedication. It's these qualities why Coach Max has enjoyed such great success here. Coach was able to sit down with me in his office to talk about Raider football, as well as the pressure of recruiting. <laughs> the hardest part about being a college football coach, uh, it's probably the organizational part of it, you know, uh, just getting everybody on the same page. And also, you know, just uh, recruiting. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's getting tougher and tougher all the time. And we're pretty fortunate here at Shippensburg to have nice facilities and, and, you know, a really good looking campus. Yeah, listen, I, I know everybody wants to win a championship. That's why you do it, right? right. But I think you've got to have daily goals. And, you know, just this spring, we had our players list two goals, one personal goal and one football family goal. All right, what they want us to achieve as a family. And it's funny, we did that in the beginning of the semester and now we're having exit interviews now. And and we're talking to the players about the goals they had set for themselves. Uh, but I, I'm a big believer in small goals to begin with, you know, and that means getting up, going to class. That means in the weight room, working your tail off at practice, you know, uh, taking notes during meetings, all that kind of stuff will add to the big picture. While the Raiders ended the season a tremendous 9-2, unfortunately it was not enough to make the playoffs. Many were upset, the only thing left to do was enjoy the great success this team had achieved. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the Raiders season, and we hope to see you next year. This is Douglas Marsco with SUTV, signing off.